Hi, I'm Amy Cross, and today we are gonna talk about those Ancestry DNA tests. So you took one and you just got it back, and now you're like, I don't know what all this means. So we're gonna go over it very quickly and talk to you a little bit about what your DNA test means. DNA is really complicated and it can be kind of crazy, but we're just gonna hit the basics today. So stay tuned. All right, so I cannot use a live screen because I have to cover people's names for the protection of their privacy. So let me show you what we've got when you open up your Ancestry DNA. If you click up at the top, DNA, you're gonna go to your DNA homepage. So we're gonna talk here about, we have those three boxes here at the bottom of the page. We have your DNA story, your DNA matches, and your through lines. And we're gonna go through each one of those. So ethnicity, your DNA story, is what most people are interested in. So let's start there. Now it's been a while since I've looked at my ethnicity and ethnicity changes all the time. So as they get more DNA tests in, and like I mentioned in the last video, they're at 18 million as of September of 2021. So as they get more DNA tests in, things change as time and, and additional tests in the database as well as improvements in science continue. So um, anyway, I got some notifications here. Your updated ethnicity estimate is here. So they note that they've added some more data to their reference panel, which makes it easier for them to tell nearby regions apart. So whoopee, I've got even better results. We'll see. So as I click through that screen, I see my ethnicity estimate and I'm pretty boring. I'll own that. So I'm primarily English, Irish, and Scottish, but I am not just those things. And I will show you how ethnicity is not always correct because it's not for me. So in my case, I have my family line researched back on, not in all of my lines, but on some of my lines back quite far. In, in my France line, I actually have family that came from Limoges, France, and um, I have that line traced back to Napoleon. And as you can see from my DNA estimates, I don't see any France, or very little. There's a little tiny bit up at the top with Belgium. So, um, but I should be like, Limoges is right in the middle of France. So why is that the case? Why did that happen? There's a couple of reasons. One, like I mentioned before, the science is changing and the groups that they're using to base the ethnicity is changing. If you see there on the right hand side, right underneath your DNA looks like DNA from these four world regions. How do we calculate this? If you click on that, it explains that they use a reference panel to compare your DNA with. So it is because of that reference panel that kind of explains why your ethnicity can be wrong. They're taking a relatively small group of people and they're comparing their DNA to yours to see whether or not you match that group. If you do, then they know because that small group of people they know came from a particular area of the world. They know that your family, at least some of your family, came from that area of the world. So that could be wrong, right? There could be a mistake there. And then the other reason why your DNA cannot show up in a particular area is because your DNA is very happenstance. You take half of your DNA from your mom and half of your DNA from your dad who took half of their DNA from their mom and half from their dad. And siblings are not gonna share the same amount of DNA. They only share half of their DNA. And the reason is because they're taking different snippets of their parents' DNA. So when you go back far enough, like to your great grandfather, you're only taking 12 and a half percent of their DNA. And then who knows what 12 and a half percent then got passed on. You know, do you see what I'm saying? It just, it kind of dilutes its way down. So in my instance, on my grandmother, who her mother was French and her father was English, it looks like I got a lot of her DNA that was English instead of the DNA that was French. And that would explain why I'm not showing up as having French ethnicity, but I do. So keep that in mind when you're looking at ethnicity. It is kind of a moving science and it's not definite and a lot of people get upset about that. Don't, 
Um, they're doing the best they can, but it's not an exact science at this point at all. So let's move on now to the second thing there, the DNA matches. As a genealogist, this is kind of my favorite part because this is what I am using to try to help people build their tree. If you're adopted or your parents or grandparents were adopted and you're trying to fill in those blanks, this is gonna be the area that is the most important to you. So we're gonna, there's a lot of different things you can do in this section and we do not have time to cover all of them, but we're just gonna cover some of the highlights. Click around though and experiment, take a look at the different things. Don't be hesitant to click anything that's like a different color. That means it's gonna link you to a different place or an explanation that can help you understand something better. So let's look at the first page of my DNA matches. And it starts with my father and it starts with my son. And then I also have his close family, my uncle, and then um, I have second and third cousins. Most people have first cousins in there as well, but I don't have any DNA matches at that level. I guess I'm just weird. So let's talk a little bit about one of the important things of these matches. It's their trees, and it's one of the reasons why DNA and research on ancestry is so great. Um, there's so many trees on Ancestry. I don't even know how many trees. They have 18 million DNA tests. They have more than that trees. Here we see that my dad has an unleaked tree. And if I were to click on that, then um, I will be able to see the unlinked trees that he has in his account. And sometimes I can get some really good information off of looking at those trees. So if you see an unlinked tree, click on it and look at their tree. And then the other two have a publicly linked tree. And my son has a 70 person tree that he's primarily taken from me. And my uncle has a over 5,000 person tree. His wife is a tried and true genealogist. She loves it, she's really good at it. And so he has a really big tree. And then the last person has no tree at all. So if I were to go down the page and now look at my extended family matches, I see William Ross, L something and then Mrs. something and I've covered these names for privacy purposes. So here we see again we have no tree, an unlinked tree, a publicly linked tree and a, of only two people which doesn't really tell you anything and then you have another publicly linked tree that has a little bit more in it with a common ancestor, that little green leaf there that shows you they have a common ancestor. So I'm just going to show you the first one, William. So if I click on William, it shows our common ancestors, which because he has no tree, we have none. If they have a tree, I'm gonna see a listing of common ancestors. That doesn't tell you how you're related. It tells you that you are definitely related and it may be through this common ancestor, but with autosomal DNA, you don't know for sure that you are related through that ancestor. You kind of have to do the legwork to make sure that you are. Because he doesn't have a tree, that would be down here in the bottom, but you do have a green contact button for him. Um, one of the things that's really helpful though is the shared matches. If I were to click on shared matches, it will show all of the different people that both William and I match. And I use the leads method, and you can Google search that, the leads method of analyzing DNA matches to identify my different lines. I did this quite a while ago, and so there's a few people that have been added since I did that. If you notice, like right underneath add his relationship is a little blue dot with add or edit groups. And so I'm gonna click on that and it shows you the different groups that I have. Now, one of the people that matched both William and I, I know is related to me through my Kinsley line. We've spoken to one another and I know her family tree and I know that's how we're related. And so anybody else that matches both she and I, I know they're related to me through the Kinsley line. Now, every once in a while you have intermarriage, you know, and, and stuff like that, but that's like a whole nother topic. So we're not gonna get that complicated today. I have designated Kinsley as blue. So I have this little blue dot here. And if you go back to my match page, you'll see that all of the, that three of the people on that page are blue and they all match me through my Kinsley line. But Ross doesn't. And I wanna show you another feature that's kind of new that Ancestry added actually since I added all my different colors. Um, and they asked if you recognize them. Now I know Ross, I know how I'm related to him, so I'm gonna click yes. And when I do that, a little screen pops up on the side and it asks, do you know what side of your family that you match Ross? And I know it's on my father's side, so I click next. 
And then it asks, are you a second cousin, a first cousin twice removed, a half a first cousin, or half a great grand uncle? And that's where you need to understand your family relationships and how you're related. So let me show you a um, Centimorgan chart that Blaine Bettinger put together. He has a website, The Genetic Genealogist, which is fantastic, and he has a book out that I highly recommend. I'll put a link to that in my show notes. That's a great overview of DNA and how it's used for genealogy. Anyway, he's made this um, chart public, which is very, very helpful. And this shows the different, these are Centimorgan numbers, and they show the average that you would see between like a match, like if you see the little box up at the top, an aunt and uncle, their um, average Centimorgan match would be, and Centimorgans is a unit of measure for the amount of DNA that you share. The higher the Centimorgans, the closer the match. So an aunt and uncle, the average match is 700 or 1,741 Centimorgans, but it could be anywhere between 12 and over 2,200. And so I know that I am a first cousin once removed with Ross. Ross's father was my grandparents' sibling. So I know my relationship. Ross and I share 274 centimorgans. And that's actually lower than would be expected for that type of a relationship match. But it is within the allowances. So I guess I'm just kind of weird. So that's how Ross and I match. So I'm going to go back to Ross and because I see that none of the relationships that we are there is listed, I'm going to show more possible relationships and then select first cousin once removed. Now let me show you quickly the last thing, the through lines. Now through lines like other shared matches is only as good as the DNA or is only as good as the trees built by you and by the people that you're matching. So through lines can be wrong. And, but it can give you some good information and it's certainly a good place to start. And what Through Lines does, when you click on Through Lines, it will show you all of your different family members that are in your tree. Here I have my second great grandparents and I'm gonna focus on George W. Stevenson. He has been our black sheep. We cannot figure out who he is. And this is somebody that my aunt, who's done a lot of research, thinks may be the father of our ancestor, George Cecil Stevenson but we haven't really been able to prove it and I'm not convinced that this is the correct um, relative. So I've got a big note on there that this is not proven. So if I click on him, it shows that I have two DNA matches that have George in their tree as well. And it shows the suspected relationship and the two matches are my uncle and my son. Now my uncle, his wife is the one that made that supposition and my son has taken his information from me which might be wrong. So we'll have to chat about that. This may be wrong information. So if I were to adopt this George Stevenson for sure, thinking that he is definitely my relative, it may not be right. But some of this through line information can be really helpful and you can play around on that and experiment and see you know, what you think about that. Before we go, I want to talk to you about one other really big thing and that is downloading your raw DNA data. And you do that through the settings. So if you see up here on the top right, you have a settings button on your DNA page. If you click that, it's gonna go over all of your different DNA settings that you set up initially when you first entered your DNA test. If you remember, we did that at the very beginning. You can change any of this information. You can change your name, you can change your birth year, you can change the tree that you've linked, you can change all of that information. And then if I scroll down a little bit further, I have display preferences, sharing preferences, consent on being part of that research project. I can change any of that at any time. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom to actions, I'll see download DNA data. And so if I click that, it will walk me through the process of downloading that data, which I can then take and put on other sites. Now, Ancestry does not allow you to upload DNA data from other DNA testers, but a few of the other sites allow you to take your data from other sites such as Ancestry and put them in their databases so that then they can compare them and try to find matches for you with them. And let me show you what those sites are myheritage.com 
and family tree DNA allow you to upload DNA data from other people. And they have trees on their sites so that you can look at the trees like you can on Ancestry. You can find your matches, you can analyze. It's a little bit different process. The screens may look a little bit different, but you're gonna be able to find your matches and see if you can determine if you have a match maybe where you were missing one in Ancestry. Maybe you couldn't find those important matches that you need in Ancestry, but maybe they're on MyHeritage or on Family Tree DNA. Family Tree DNA also is like really one of the few that offers mtDNA, which is a, testing just the maternal side of your DNA, and yDNA, which is testing the paternal side. So they have some more advanced DNA options. So some people use them more than other sites because of that fact. And then the last one is GEDmatch. GEDmatch was created so that people could put up their DNA information. You can find matches through that. They have some really cool tools. And a lot of people have used that that are looking for birth parents and things like that. So if you're trying to find birth parents, or if you're wanting to break through that brick wall, then I would definitely recommend you thinking about putting your DNA up on one of these three sites. And you don't need to pay and, and redo it with those sites. You can just take your DNA from Ancestry and throw it up there and it'll save you a lot of money. So I hope this video has been of help to you. I would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. We're trying to increase our subscribers and build big enough so that YouTube starts promoting the content and more people can see these videos that I'm spending so much time creating. Anyway, so click on my face over there to subscribe and please like this video if it's been helpful to you and write your comments in the bottom. I'm happy to try to answer those if I can for you. Have a great day.